Alrighty, hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another uh, reading wrap up. It is the month of August. My camera broke at vegan camp out, so I'm filming on my phone. Dane reads. I have two books to chat to you about. One of them's through there. Uh, it's called The Trials of Life by David Attenborough. It's a hardback, I have about four or five of these to get through. And I listen to this on audiobook while doing my jogging. A uh, very interesting stuff, a lot of biology going on, you know? And um, yeah, sometimes hard to follow, but other times fascinating. Like there was some really interesting stuff about like homing pigeons and how, how they work. They use the Earth's magnetic field. So they were doing experiments by putting like opaque contact lenses on them so they could see, but only for a few feet. Um, really cool kind of investigations into that there's some good stuff on um how animals like lay their young so some of them will take the approach of having loads and loads of eggs and like may the best man win others will have one or two eggs and like dedicate all their time to protecting them so overall really fascinating stuff i gave the trials of life by david attenborough a 3.5 out of 5. and then i read the bedding of boys by edward lawn and i have to say this has probably been my favorite of all of the edward lawn that i've read so far it's certainly the one that reads the most like um you know a traditionally published non-indie novel i think he's really found his really hit his stride with it it is one of his more recent ones to be fair as well it said um when is it published 2018 uh, I don't know what Lorne's doing these days, by the way. I don't know if he's still writing, but my, my girlfriend's a really big Edward Lorne fan since uh, she picked up Life After Dane. Uh, so we've probably, between us, we've read five or six of his books now, and we're just going through as many as we can find because they're not really on general sale anymore. I think we have to get them, like, secondhand and shit. But yes, uh, really enjoyed The Bedding of Boys. It's basically about an older woman who is seducing, like, teenage boys, and um, she may or may not be a murderer with a friend that's a ghost. So there's that going on as well. But it's just really well written. Lots of little Stephen King references as well. And it's set in Bay's End. And it, he's kind of doing what King does and building his own, like, mythos, I guess. Building his own world. Uh, like, a, like a bit like a Marvel Expanded Universe, I guess. But in uh, book form. So yeah, I gave The Bedding of Boys a strong four out of five. And, and don't be surprised if it ends up in my, my top books of the year. Um, or at least, well, of the quarter. And then it goes into the year. So, so yes, that's where we're at. All right, guys, just the one book to wrap up today. That is 2061 Odyssey 3 by Arthur C. Clarke, the third in the Space Odyssey series. Honestly, I think 2010 Odyssey 2 was my favourite. This one was a pretty good read as well, though. It just wraps things up quite nicely. Um, I mean, it doesn't help that Chandra died uh, in between books two and three, and he was probably my favourite character. But I still think there's some really interesting stuff on like the nature of the nature of artificial intelligence, what it would look like if we if we ever had contact with a you know it's a technological superior race. It's just Arthur C. Clarke goodness, you know. It's no rendezvous with Rama, but it's still good. I would give it probably like a week, four out of five. All right, guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today. That is Les Elfes et les Purple Cachés, uh, The Elves and the Hidden People, Douze Camp Populaire Islandais, uh, 12 popular Icelandic tales, like Icelandic folk tales, basically. Very cute little book. It's got some awesome illustrations. It shows you where in Iceland the tales are from, if it's known. Quite often it's Geolocalization in Kanu, which means like geolo geolocation unknown got uh, illustrations pretty easy to read i read most of it i read like three quarters of it in the bath at shays and then finished it off uh, the evening after and yeah just very fun probably a four out of five i mean it's aimed at kids really but again um i was reading it in french so it was the perfect <laughs> perfect level for me i uh, would recommend if you want to get some icelandic folk tales in you all right guys just the one book to wrap up for you today that is the doll of short stories by daphne du maurier with an introduction by polly samson um i actually read this via an audiobook and that kind of added a lot to it because the woman reading it like obviously she wasn't daphne du maurier but she sounded like i would imagine daphne du maurier would sound um really sort of massively crafted short stories beautiful stuff um all varied you know they're all tell like they're all kind of different genres and all that kind of stuff but um you know, I only actually listen to it via, via audiobook because um, I need I jog while I listen to audiobooks, basically, and I needed a new one to go to, and I had a ton of De Maurier that I own and that are ready to read, but I could quite happily have read this as well. I mean, it's nice print, the stories were good. Um, it's not like some of the other stuff where I've listened on audiobook because I just didn't want to actually read them, but I wanted to get them into my brain. Overall, I would give the doll short stories by Daphne De Maurier a kind of a weak, no, a, no, a middle of the road 3.5 out of 5. Got there in the end. Alrighty guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today, that is The Lost Worlds of 2001 by Arthur C. Clarke. And um, yeah, this is, well it's described as the ultimate book of the ultimate trip, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Basically it has sort of non-fiction Arthur C. Clarke 
kind of revisiting what inspired it, what caused him to write it. And then it also has like early chapters, all kinds of bonus little goodies. Um, I actually found it more interesting than the original novel, which is kind of funny. But I think it's because after reading 2001, I've then since watched the movie, which I've never seen before. And I've read the remaining books in the trilogy as well. So actually going into this, I'm learning a lot more of the kind of behind the scenes stuff that really kind of fascinated me quite a lot. Overall, I would give The Lost Worlds of 2001 a four out of five. All right, just the one book to wrap up for you today. That is The Best of Arthur C. Clarke, 1937 to 1971. Honestly, about 70 to 80% of these stories I'd read before. So the most interesting bit for me was the introduction and a couple of the early stories that hadn't really been published anywhere apart from here and I think in the collected stories of Arthur C. Clarke. Um, but yeah, it meant that as I was reading that, I had to keep Googling the names of each story to figure out whether I'd read them or not. Um, but it was still very enjoyable, probably like a week, four out of five. I think I might have enjoyed it a bit more if I hadn't read most of the stories before. But um, yes, make of that as you will. So first off, I read um, oh, uh, Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. So this is the prequel to The Hate You Give. I'm actually currently watching The Hate You Give movie right now, um, which is very good. Actually, I think the movie might be better than the book. Don't hate me for saying that. I really enjoyed Concrete Rose as well. Probably enjoyed that more than The Hate You Give as well. I think Angie Thomas's writing has come along. Uh, I mean, I think it was good to begin with, to be honest. Uh, she's definitely like one of the better authors I've discovered through BookTube. Um, obviously, we've got all of the really, you know, pertinent um, racial commentary and things like that especially sort of in today's day and age of police shootings and all of that all of that I was gonna say good stuff but obviously it's not good stuff um, but yeah beautifully written it tells a story but also asks the reader a lot of questions I think it's really difficult to do that um, at least to do it well and Angie Thomas certainly does um, it doesn't feel like she's preaching to you basically um, it feels like she's telling you a story and you come out of it having thought about the issues at hand you know so yeah strong four out of five for me and then i read uh, cradle by arthur c clark and gentry lee and it was just okay i mean pretty bog standard sci-fi really i don't know don't know if i have much to say about it uh, i gave it a 3.5 out of five it wasn't particularly well written and i assume that's gentry lee's input um, it didn't have that, you know, typical incredible writing that arthur c clark is normally known for but it did still have a lot of the really good ideas um, it's just a sci-fi novel, nothing particularly interesting or noteworthy about it, so was... Alright, so those are all the books that I read in the month of August. As always, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.